Hey, good morning. This is Jay. The last fly I tied, I don't know if it's the last one we posted, but the last fly I tied was this hollow fly. It's, it's a hollow deceiver. Uh, but not everybody uses flies that large, including myself. Uh, including myself, including me. Um, here's what I'm going to show you today. Big difference in the size of these flies. Both using hollow fly techniques, tying techniques. Uh, pretty cool. I love these flies. So let's get started and see what it's going to be like to create this beautiful thing. One of the things that can be tricky about filming these is what kind of a background to use. So these are light colors. I chose a black t-shirt. Sometimes that makes the materials or my hand look too bright and shiny. But let's see what happens. So here we go. Uh, this is an Arex Predator Stinger Hook. I have a little bit of super glue or uh, Loctite on there. And I'm putting a piece of bucktail, a little chunk of fairly sparse bucktail with not, with not much on the butts. And this is at the tail. And this is in order to support those hackles. I've just chosen two matched hackles, tying them in. And they're, the shiny parts are in and the curve goes out. What I'm doing here is putting just a little veil of bucktail all the way around this fly. And that again helps support the bucktail and um, pretty much uh, prevents fouling of that uh, hackle tail. And now I'm starting the hollow tie process where I uh, tie the bucktail in with tips facing forward, spin it around the hook, and trim off the butts. And I will, I will tie three of these stations before I put the finishing touches on this fly. This is my John tool. Uh, it's really nice to help you push the bucktail back. And you see, I didn't, don't just push the bucktail back, but I work it with my fingers and I, I squeeze those fibers and then I build a thread dam. I don't wrap over the bucktail. Uh, always put a little bit of super glue, a little bit of Loctite in between each stage. We want these flies to be really durable. So you can see that that, uh, that uh, bucktail is, it, it's very full, it, it has a lot of body. I'm working, um, tying another hollow station here, moving towards the front, and I'm going to put a little bit of flash. Uh, you, there's no end to the type of uh, flash you can use in these flies. Um, and what I'm showing you here is how the, the feathers are flared and how full this is. And as you strip this, it will pulse and move in the water. So I'm going to finish off the front of this fly with a chartreuse hollow station. I like this color combination really well. Uh, well. It's all white with a chartreuse uh, four station. Uh, you pretty much need to have at least three stations on your hollow fly to have them look right. But I, actually, I'm going to take that back. I, I, I will at some point I'll show you some hollow style flies tied with just two hollow stations. Anyway, at this point, I'm working on uh, building that thread dam for my final stage, and here goes the head. Basically, this fly is finished. And now I have some choices of what kind of eyes, if any, I'd put on. Uh, I could paint on eyes. I could use a pro-tabbed eyes or pro-jungle cock. All kinds of options. Uh, as always, when using GSP thread, I like to tie two whip finishes and keep them very secure and then make sure I cement really well. But before I cement, I'm going to use my, uh, my Copic marker. I have a nice little blue. I think this is a flow blue uh, instead of the white. And this happens to be hard as hull head finish. Uh, 
I like the bone dry solar res as well. So here's the, the bigger fly I tied earlier. And now here is this beauty, a little bit of uh, side to side action. And here's how this thing is going to flow in the water. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I hope I get a chance to do some more for you. Good luck out there on the water. Thank you.